case 14 is a uh, female patient with a mass involving the left forearm uh, region. I'm going to start on the right side just to give an idea of normal for this patient. Um, so we are looking uh, in the region of the supinator muscle. This is the radius right here that we're seeing in short axis and the unaffected side, the supinator muscle here. So the deep uh, head, which is this one here up against the bone from here to here, the superficial head right here to here, and the space in between for the posterior interosseous nerve to run. Um, again, the right side showing the deep head right up against the bone and a little bit of the superficial head, and we're starting to see the uh, posterior interosseous nerve and vessels coming through between those uh, heads. On the affected side, however, we see the radius way down here, the supinator being pushed up, and this big soft tissue mass displacing um, the muscle here. So the mass is uh, somewhat predominantly uh, isotohyperechoic um, relative to the skeletal muscle. I'd probably go with hyperechoic in this uh, case, but significant size and mass effect. As we follow the posterior interosseous nerve, um, we note that it runs into this area where it gets compressed by this uh, soft tissue mass and it significantly enlarges. Uh, and then we can see it continuing through uh, the mass. Um, all of this is mass pushing muscle out this way. Uh, so very large, causing mass effect. The patient's actually symptomatic uh, from the nerve compression as well. Um, so this mass is causing problems for a couple of different reasons. This mass even extends down toward the wrist. We see the radius on this side, the ulna over here, and you can still see this large soft tissue mass. Uh, in this area, uh, more clearly uh, hyperechoic relative to the muscle. It's displacing the subcutaneous tissue here and skin here. And as we come distally, you see it's still pushing muscle away. Um, so very, very large mass uh, uh, for this um, patient and then the forearm. Um, so we needed some uh, additional imaging just to try to further characterize this mass, although the imaging characteristics were suggestive of a uh, fatty lesion. Um, we didn't see um, predominantly hypoechoic uh, regions. It looked somewhat homogenous, um, and then uh, there were no cystic areas. Uh, there was not really any flow in this either. So um, we decided to get an x-ray, and an x-ray was ordered. And the x-ray shows this fatty mass here against the radius, pushing the muscles out this way. Um, so you can see the mass effect on it. If I window this, it might be a little easier to see. The muscle here being pushed away by this fatty mass. On the lateral view, it's kind of hard to see, but you um, can almost make out some fat in here and here and definitely over here. Um, we put a BB marker uh, right on top of where the mass was on ultrasound. Um, but if I window this a little bit, you can clearly see the fatty tissue out here, and you kind of get an idea of the fatty tissue with probably some septations in here as well. So because of the size of this uh, mass and that it was causing um, uh, nerve-related compression uh, symptoms, um, it was resected, uh, and the final histology was an intramuscular lipoma.